For every success, there is a failure. For every triumph, a heartbreak. For every victory, a tragedy. International players cover a large portion of the Major League Baseball landscape. In fact, Latino players accounted for 29.3% of the 2015 opening day rosters. Ask any baseball fan to name some of the best players in today's game, and they will inevitably say the name Cespedes, Correa, Fernandez, Abreu. But it wasn't always this way. After Jackie Robinson broke the Major League Baseball color barrier in 1947, it was another two years before Minnie Minoso began his career, becoming Major League Baseball's first Latin American star in the process. But he would only be the first, and would soon be followed by the likes of Clemente, Cepeda, Marichal. Soon there was a mass exodus of players from the Latin American leagues into the Major Leagues. Teams were faced with a dilemma. There were so many players who would be the next Clemente? Who would turn into the next disappointment? Could the teams themselves have a say in who turned into the next big thing? It seemed only fitting that the Los Angeles Dodgers would become the first to find out. While scouting foreign players was certainly not new, and admittedly the Dodgers had been one of the first teams to do that as well, the Dodgers took international scouting to a new level. For better or for worse, Baseball, as the Americas knew it, would never be the same, and it all started in a place called Campo Las Palmas. The 1970s were a time of change for Major League Baseball. The designated hitter was introduced. Charlie Finley's colorful and unconventional Oakland A's won three straight World Series titles. And in 1975, Major League Baseball free agency was born, paving the way for skyrocketing salaries. But underneath the surface, the grounds for a new experiment were being cultivated. Dodger President Peter O'Malley and General Manager Al Campanis had been devising a plan for a large-scale baseball academy in a Latin American country. Their biggest setback, however, was finding a suitable location. Finally, they were able to work out a deal in the Dominican Republic town of Guerra. In March of 1987, one month before Campanis resigned as Dodger General Manager, the team opened Campo Las Palmas. With its exceptional living condition, pristine fields, kitchens, study halls, and even classes on assimilating to United States life, Campo Las Palmas was truly a breakthrough in Latin American scouting. It didn't take long before the first notable prospects arrived. Perhaps the first prospects to really showcase the quality of Campo Las Palmas were Ramon Martinez and his brother Pedro. When the curtains fell on their careers, Pedro had amassed 219 wins, a 2.93 earned run average, and earned induction to the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. While his career was not Hall of Fame caliber, Ramon Martinez was an all-star pitcher in his own right who won 135 games and posted a very solid career 3.67 ERA. From the outsets of their careers, a very strong message had been sent. The Dodgers and Campo Las Palmas had been successful. Other notable players would follow. Raul Mondesi, Jose Offerman, Pedro Estacio. Other teams quickly jumped on board and tried to emulate the Dodgers model. Soon every team in the major leagues had a baseball academy in at least one international country. To this day, due to their reputation and their commitment to international excellence, the Dodgers are regarded as one of the most successful organizations in the international player pool and development program. At the turn of the 21st century, controversy shrouded the international signing process. Players lied about their ages, forfeiting large signing bonuses and becoming a frequent headline in the baseball world. But it would only get worse. At age 15, Yuri Guillen began to receive visits from scouts and executives associated with Major League Baseball teams. Soon he found himself in a baseball academy run by the Washington Nationals. Following a one-year suspension for lying about his age, Guillen returned to the academy in Boca Chica. Soon, Guillen started experiencing headaches, but nothing was done about them. There were bigger sacrifices to be made in order to reach America. But his headaches grew worse. After little more than a treatment of tea and aspirin by an unlicensed trainer, Guillen was sent home on April 8, 2011. One week later, April 15th, Yuri Guillen died.
There was no investigation, no punishment from the League. The Nationals said they would improve their facilities and equip them with a trained medical professional. For their part, Major League Baseball said the Nationals had followed all required protocols. In time, the Nationals have improved their facilities, but they have done so at the expense of not only a prospect, but at the expense of a young man. Ultimately, the baseball academies are good not just for the teams, but the communities within which they operate. The average academy cost $4 million to build, and many staff members of the academies are local residents who find employment with these professional teams. Also, a Major League Baseball study updated in 2014 finds that the United States baseball industry contributes between $150 to $170 million annually to the Dominican Republic economy. The relationship triangle between Latin America, North America, and baseball has a history of being rocky and complicated. But, like any relationship that is destined to last, the differences are always resolved. The United States baseball industry provides much needed funding and jobs to Latin American nations. In turn, the nations provide the personnel, the prospects, the players, for one of the biggest revenue generators in America. The success of Campo Las Palmas opened the doors for the heroes of today and the stars of tomorrow to be found much more frequently, to be cultivated under the leadership of professional baseball employees, to be taught what it means to not only be a ball player in America, but a person in America. It began with a dream, a dream to build a better baseball team, regardless of where in the world those pieces came from. It began with the dream by the Los Angeles Dodgers that if international players were going to come to America, the process would have to be done correctly. They are people, after all, these prospects. But not only that, they're still just children, with many players entering the academy before they turn 16. It began with a dream, and the dreams of these children turned prospects continues to live on every spring. A dream of becoming the next hero in a game made for heroes. Baseball. Latin America's game. The United States of America's game. Together. Our game.